back, ladies and gentlemen. You're checking out a fresh edition of What's Up on TV. What's up? What's up? Zadonica Ada Paparella here, always reporting for duty, always doing what I love to do best, and that is put a smile on your beautiful and very handsome faces. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Well, before now, I did tell you when we come back, you'll be checking out the entertainment news, and I'm about to do just that, okay? Well, before we dive into the juicy details, we like to check out the headlines first. So, are you ready? In the news, producer Kubam Sasuko's wife reveals that your son was born blind. Or, G Worldwide hires Olisa Bakoba in Lego battle against Kiss Daniel. Wow. Will Vector and MI battle for 40 million naira? Big question. Actresses Kemia Falabi and Gloria Johnson fight over man. Wow. Beyonce's second most beautiful woman in the world and in sports. Walter Wade boxer Patrick Day dies at age 27. All these and more details shortly. Stay with us. You're welcome back. You're still checking out the entertainment news and this very fresh edition of What's Up on TV. So Don Paparella is my name. You just checked out the headlines and it's time to, you know, check out the details too as well. I know that's the reason why you're here. That is why I am here. Um, we all know producer Kobam Sasuko. Kobam Sasuko is a prolific producer. The dude is a music maestro. Um, he got married sometime in 2010 and him and his wife, um, who goes by the name is Ojo Alakbe, Veronica Asuko actually had a child sometime in 2011. Um, the child, when he was born, was visually impaired. So after a series of tests, you know, both home and abroad, um, they finally arrived at the conclusion um, that the child actually was born blind. It was discovered by doctors that the child was born blind. Now, why I said is mixed feeling is because, I mean, um, Kobam Sasuko is uh, um, visually impaired, but the man has grown to become one of the greatest men that worked or that is walking this earth as we speak. Koba Msasuko happens to be like the eight wonder of the world, you know, after the likes of Stephen Wonder. I mean, Stephen Wonder was also um, visually impaired or is also visually impaired, but he went on to do great things, accomplish great things in his musical career. And Koba has done that too for himself. Um, great so many production credits, so many um, song credits. He has some of the most beautiful songs recorded by anybody from this part of the world. Now, we don't know for certain, we, it's, I don't think we should feel too bad about it because this child might just grow up to even break every record that the father has broken. And that's not to say that um, um, technology might not get to a point in the nearest future where something can actually be done for the child. So all hope is not lost yet. It's a, it's a, it's a bit of a mixed news, like I said, a mixed feeling kind of news. But we'll just keep praying for the parents and of course the child and believe that God will continue to do the best and uh, help that child, whatever happens to realize you know, he's a full potential. Well, that's about that. We wish the family all the best of luck. Now, recently, <laughs> there's been a lot of drama. Now, this is be between M.I. Abaga and Vector. Well, there's been so much going on on Twitter, on social media. Um, there's been, there have been these songs. Um, somebody did a diss song, someone responded to it, somebody went on to um, <laughs> respond to this song again. All this started um, some weeks back when um, Vector actually had dropped or released a song and um, had taken a shade at MI. MI, who was in London, uh, as at the time the song was released, did not respond until he came back. I remember um, on the very day MI came back, MI actually posted a picture on Twitter. In the picture, you would see in the, in the frame, um, his apartment where he stays and um, a couple of cars and one of those cars was a Bentley and the dude just simply captioned it home and that kind of like trended on Twitter. People actually saw that automatically as a response to Vector's diss. I was saying, oh, okay, uh, this dude is actually showing that he's an industry. I mean, he has a lot, he has accomplished so much. Well, MI went on to consolidate on that by actually recording a diss song. And this song he titled uh, <laughs> The Viper or Snake, you know, and uh, that didn't go well with Vector or Vector's fans. Um, that single actually trended. Now, Vector didn't take it lying down. He decided to respond and we had uh, 
Judas the rat, which has been trending madly. Vector didn't stop there when the spies releasing some DMs um, that MI had sent to him. So, everybody likes to tap into the controversy to, you know, chase clout one way or the other. But I don't know if that is what Willie O, singer Willie Exo, is doing. Willie Exo came out and offered 20 million naira, um, winner takes all, for a rap, a proposed rap battle between MI Baga and Vector. But he also went, <laughs> he also cleared us, you know, he also cleared everybody, letting everybody know that this was a business transaction as it's going to, it is going to be like a proper show where gate fees will be charged for attendees. Now, Hush Puppy decided to also stake another 20 million, making it 40 million winner takes all. So, will Emma Baga and Vector the Viper battle slug it out, winner takes all for their troubles? Come here, here on herself. Call on herself all the name. Maybe people come, come clap for her now. Then one person go with 40 million. That we will find out. Still in the news. Well, all is not over yet between um, the owners of G Worldwide and former artists who used to be signed to the label, Kiss Daniel. Well, a lot happened between 2017 to 2018, where Chris Daniel unceremoniously um, quit the label and floated his own label, Flyboy Inc. And there was a lot of dust that was raised and the drama that ensued after then. I mean, litigation process took a better part of 2017. They went to court. You know, there was so much controversy surrounding it. The label actually is of the opinion that Chris Daniel prematurely left the label and didn't fulfill all his obligations that is expected of him as um, um, stated in the contract between label and artist and Kiss Daniel is saying look I have done more than my first share you guys were you know robbing me blind you weren't giving me all my dues and um, I have stayed the number of years I'm supposed to stay I've released the number of albums I'm supposed to release and it worked away or so it seemed um, we never had closure on this case I mean there was never a point where we where we got actual information that the case was over well we can actually say that theory is true with recent developments given that MG Worldwide has hired renowned lawyer and activist um, Melissa Agbakova's son well in, a, in the new Lego tussle with Kiss Daniel and what they are asking for right now is crazy I mean the whole sum they are demanding um, they are asking for is about 500 million naira <laughs> in damages caused as a result of um, Casey's um, hasty or premature um, termination of the contract. And the money <laughs> is crazy. And 500 million naira, that's half a billion naira. I don't know how Kiss Daniel is going to pay that sum. But Kiss Daniel has given a lot of people the impression that he's really, really rich. I mean, we've seen some properties um, linked to his name in recent times, you know, some beautiful cars, very expensive cars. Well, we just hope that this issue is resolved amicably and they can put an end. We can have closure once and for all and all parties can end this contract amicably and still remain friends. You're welcome back. You're still checking out the entertainment news and this very fresh edition of What's Up on TV. So don't pop a rather is my name. Golden Globes champion Patrick Day has died. He died at the age of 27. This is a very, very sad news. I'm a very big fan of um, Patrick Day, who happens to be the apart from the Golden Globes champion, is a welterweight champion too. Um, he passed on precisely on the 16th of October, um, four days after his last fight on the 12th of October, where he sustained an injury to the head um, from blows that he received from his opponent, um, Charles Conwell, who knocked him out in the 10th round. Um, his opponent right now is actually considering quitting boxing, seeing in an open letter he issued saying he never meant to hurt Patrick Day. Uh, we can understand why he feels that way, um, but I will advise that he doesn't need to quit. He might take some time off, you know, but I mean, this is something you have been doing a better part of your life. You didn't mean to hurt him, it's a spot, but unfortunately what happened, happened. I guess this is where the psych team and some therapy comes in to help him out of this depressed state. Now, Patrick Day was actually no ordinary boxer. This is a man who has a, a degree in, um, in, in the catering arts. I mean, he's done a lot for himself. He's from a very, very good family. He didn't need to box to make money. He's from a, 
a comfortable home, very respectable family. He's a principled man, a giver, very responsible, positive man who always gave out the charity, always helped out people as much as he could. So his death is actually a very sad one. We've lost another soldier. One of the good ones just hit the dust again. Um, we wish him and the family all the very best. Um, we pray that he rests in the bosom of the Lord and he makes heaven, which is the ultimate prize. With that, we've come to the end of the entertainment news. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, tell somebody about it. Let's do it again. Same time next week. Same station, ladies and gentlemen. Zadon Paparella remains my name.